Fire Fire and Fogo and I sneeze sneeze sneeze. Well, fire and doggo and I sneeze, sneeze, sneeze.
work by a doggo and I sneeze sneeze sneeze. Hey, anyone there? Does this does this work? Oh, here we go. I haven't used this set for a while. Hello. Is the audio and video okay? I'm quite big in this, aren't I? Actually, a bit too big. Hey, it's the set. That's right. Give me ugh, a minute. I am huge. Yeah, I don't know why I'm so big. Make me smaller. Woolen size today. There we go. Now it's like I'm in like a hilariously big comfy chair, doesn't it? There you go. It's my VTuber set chat. My life size VTuber set. You know what I can also do? I can chuck the um, Visual Studio thing in the back. Oh, God. There you go. It's hidden. It's back there. All right. Give me a second. I was doing the announcements. Uh, new doggo also dreaming. What, did I at everyone the Dogger reviews? I don't think I did, did I? No. I'll put them in um, the Discord channel, though. Whose cat was this? Tony. I think I've done everything I need to. Question mark. Is the video public? Actually, I should probably double check. I've done this before where I've like forgotten to make my own video public. Uh, it's public. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well. Isn't that amazing? I was thinking about that set on the loo earlier. I was like, oh, I haven't used it lately. We, should, we need to make the most out of it. <laughs> anyway, how is everyone today? This is the third Woho stream in a row. Are you excited? This is where we got to yesterday. We made it so you could spawn an enemy and it would shoot at the player. That's about it. Um, Donut sent me a DM. I've also got a T here. Donut sent me a DM saying that he has solved my predicted angle issue. You need. Oh my god, really, Monus? That's incredible. I knew I don't need to uh, change the Patreon. Alright, cool. Oh shit, there's a knot in my headphones. Nope. Is this a real knot? Yes. Well, whatever. Go over there. Um. <coughs> Donut has sent me... I don't know how to show this to you. I don't really want to capture my Discord. Can I just open it in here? In like a new tab? I don't know. I'll open a paint window. You can see this, right? Um... 
Oh, that's it. No, this one. All right. This is Microsoft Paint. Donut has sent me this. Which I'm not going to pretend to understand. And this. So there you go. You can steal his work if you want. I'd recommend it. From experience. I'm alright, thank you, chat. How's everyone? Have you all had a good week? I've had a really snoozy week, honestly. Uh, anyway. He sent me this... ...code. Which I'm going to copy and paste. Music's a little loud for me. Doing good just designing a website. Oh, dope. It's your starts on misinformation. I love it. Keep it coming. Stop telling each other the truth. I'm so sick of it. Working on your hurdy-gurdy. Absolutely. Gurdy that hurdy up. Alright. Uh, bloody... Oh, shit. The song's going weird. Enemy system? Here we go. We want to put this in utilities class, I think. Let's do that. Um, utilities. Common. Well, this isn't really common. Uh, I'm going to call this maths utilities or something. I don't know. I'll come up with a better name later. Please let me make a new file. Here we go. Uh, maths. Header. If and def uh, woho maths uh, maths def def define and if namespace woho I'm gonna chuck in his function here. So I need to in include. Oh, hashtag include uh, common dot header. Hey, Donut. Is this the prediction code? I'm not sure. I've just started the stream. Um, hello. I was just making a different uh, place to put it. <coughs> I want to see. I just tried doing this stuff from memory. And I... Hey, I did it. Although I usually add a folder name, apparently. I'm just testing myself a little bit. Um, alright. Namespace Woho. Vec2. Do you mean Vec3? Ah, okay. Well, this would be uh, GLS. Hang on. Um, where it says Vec3, I've included a thing. Let's also do one for Vec2, because I will be using this in other places. Uh, let's do a little build. Also, I found a service baked into Windows that lets you save your SSH keys. Or lets you save uh, keys to the agent without having to type them, without having to type in like SSH add every single time you launch the git bash. Very comfy. Alright, what's wrong? Unused? Uh, it's defined in a header function. It can lead to ODR violations. Okay. Don't forget to put inline in the function when it's defined freely in a header. I'm trying to think if I want it to be inline or if I want it to be in a utilities class. That seems kind of... I'm thinking this... I don't know how often you're going to be including this maths header. So I'm thinking just letting it float is fine. Right? So how about just like an inline? Um, inline. I forgot about no discard. Like, don't chuck away the return. You use OpenSSH. It is OpenSSH. It is. It's uh, it's baked into Windows now. It's called like OpenSSH something service. It's just it's just authenticator service maybe. It's baked into the services window, but you have to manually enable it. Weirdly, uh, I'm not sure why. I don't know how long it's been there. Okay. 
Well, I guess I could put it in a namespace, right? I could do namespace maths. Although it seems unlikely that there would be uh, collisions with get predicted aim angle, right? It was enabled for you for years. This is the first time I'd heard of it. I've been bloody typing in my SSH keys every single time. Like some kind of idiot. All right. <coughs> we have this now. It compiles. Let's have a look and see what Donut's got. You send in a... You mentioned in your DMs. Here's a better version that properly guards against the case where the projectile is actually on top of the target. The projectile angle... I'll just type this in so you can read it as well. Um, the projectile angle, you'd pass in whatever you want the default angle to be. Like, uh, what is pi v? Is it half of pi? Like, is it just like a standard... What is this? Just, just pi. Why is it called v? All right, well, anyway, minus 0.5 for straight down. Okay. Um, can you have default values in C++? Can I just do... Are you allowed to do that? It's shorthand... Okay. Because it's a nice thing you can do in the other languages I use. Like you can define, like, a default value. Um, so it's like an optional. I guess it's just an optional parameter. I love optionals. Anyway. Difference is target position minus projectile position. Did you say projectile is the shooter's perspective? So we're saying that this is where the bullet... I mean, maybe it shouldn't say projectile if it's like... If I'm going to reuse this maybe for generic aiming stuff. But this is the, the starting position and the starting... You know, the, the V suffix is used on templates meaning value. Okay. Okay, sure. Anyway, um, you work out the difference. Although this is VEC2, so I guess you can just pass VEC3s in. That's fine. Park position minus projectile position. So that draws a line between them. If they're on top of each other, the predicted aim angle is straight down. Oh, that's that's sort of what we did before, isn't it? Well, we made it so if you're on top of the, the creature, it goes straight down. Um, with aim angle, is this returning a... It's returning a... Sorry, it's returning a float. Is it returning a... Was it a quaternion? What was the, the gimbal lock fixing version of a... The other, other radius, not radius, of the of angle? Just the angle. So this is just between zero and three and three five nine dot nine oh nine or something? Or what do you mean? Or is it between zero and two pi? Because oh it's in radians, that's it. Okay. So hello uh veg. Hey everyone, hey blank. Zero and two pi. Okay. Why would 0 0.5 shoot down, sorry? Hey, Zephyr. You're always working when you stream. I'm sorry. I mean, that probably is the case. I stream at quite a consistent time most days. Um, hello. <laughs> get back to work. Get, get out of here. Thanks for saying hi. Angle 0 is straight to the right. To get a vector out of it, you do vector 2, cosine of the angle. Sorry, uh, music started to get a bit loud. Vector 2 based off the cosine and the sine multiplied by the speed. Okay. I might actually put a different song on. This one seems to be crackling a bit. Put on, like, relaxing Dark Souls music. Here we go. You ready to be scared by Dark Souls chat? Apparently the new Metroid Prime remakes are, like, super good. And it's like quite cheap. It's like 40 quid for a Switch game. You're learning C++. Is this how it looks when you actually code really sh shit? I'm not a professional C++ developer. This is just a, a hobby thing I'm doing. Um, 
I'm normally a mobile developer. I normally do stuff in uh, Kotlin and Swift and stuff. But I mean, this is this isn't that weird. I think I'm doing some pretty basic stuff here. I'm a, I'm not using. I don't think I've done any any pointers or anything. Yeah, it's pretty basic. I'm not using any like special. I'm not using too much like special C plus plus stuff. There's no. I don't think I'm really using templates, am I? Other than that, that one place that we're doing it with uh, keyboard actions. Bruh. Yeah. You can see an example in the compiler explore link on Discord. I see. I see. Cool. Fair enough. Using templates all the time, just not writing any. Okay. Yes, you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. Let's try and chuck this in and see how it works then. So we're going to go to the... What system was it in? I don't bloody remember. Enemy system. All right. So if it's predicted, we need to import maths first, actually. Do I really need to like dot dot dash utilities slash? That seems un. I thought I could just do this. You said at some point, but that doesn't work. Lich's internet died. She says bye or oh, bye Lich. What the heck? Can't believe you'd leave. All right. Hey Rob, do you want to stream when I am coding but most of your projects can't be shown and you're afraid to leak code key things? Then work on open source things or things where you aren't really too fussed about people stealing from it, like a hobby project. You can't, you can't stream your like work, yeah. Even if it's not in your, in your contract, it, it might be. Uh, hang on, uh, auto angle equals get predicted eight angle. You'll be in the maths namespace. We need to pass in this stuff. Okay. Uh, what was it again? This. Uh, show inlay hints. This did not do what I wanted it to. Okay. Projectile position. So I'm going to assume that this is... Projectile position, I think, is the position of the uh, the enemy. So transform dot position. Projectile speed is I don't know, two fifty. Let's just write that. Projectile angle is uh, the default angle. I might rename some of this stuff. Uh, target position is uh, player position. Target velocity is. Uh, Player velocity. Ooh, Dark Souls. So then this gives me an angle. Did angle. Now I need to turn that into a uh, velocity. Oh, hello. Hello, PPPRC. To do that, you'd need to add utilities as an include directory in CMake. Or more commonly, the main folder you do utilities slash maths.header, but personally I like using relative paths. Okay. Fair enough. I don't like the idea of relative paths though, because it means if I move the folders around it won't work. Whereas if I were to include source, I suppose. Yeah, I don't know, I'll be honest. Relative, relative seems odd. I'd rather start from like a tree, you know, and go down. Like, traverse. That's how I've always done it. Is this just going to be unused? Okay. So, where is your explorer link? Here we go. Mm. Ah. Okay. 
okay. You're signing and co-signing. Multiplied by projectile speed. Wait, hang on. Am I not passing in a projectile speed? Why is that necessary? I wonder. Uh, start velocity is... Predicted angle. No, it's a... What is it? A VEC 2 -er? VEC 2? Well, I can do a VEC 3. That's fine. Uh, I think it's predicted... Wait, sorry. Sign? Was it sine then cosine? No, it's cosine then sine. Spooky. Necessary to know how far to aim ahead. Well, I get that, but I'm, I'm wondering why I need to do it twice. Like, the velocity... Sorry, the speed is being used in making the angle. So it seems odd to me that... I guess it's just an angle. I'm not... Yeah, okay. I don't know. It just seemed odd that I, I use it twice. But, I, whatever. I guess if the maths works, the maths works, right? Let's delete some of this... Trash... Uh, what else? Have I missed something? I don't think so. This looks fine to me, right? Yeah, the angle doesn't retain information about the length. Okay. Oh, sorry, what is wrong? Case homing break. Initialization of predicted angle is skipped. Sorry? Do I just need to put anything in there for you to be happy. No, that, that wouldn't make any sense. It's skipped by case label. Case predicted. Break. Case basic. Break. Case homing. Break. Do I just need to type anything in here? Like, this is a C++ thing. You need to put the case code in a scope to have variables in it. Wait, really? Like this? Oh, sorry. Maybe I need to do this bit. Uh, maybe not with the... What? Maybe without that? You put it after the break, it's the same thing. It should work when you compile. Hang on. Predicted. Oh, whoops. I guess it's just a C++ thing. Okay. Holy shit. <laughs> That's cool, isn't it? Dude. It is tracking, like, like when you really need to wee and you, like, perfectly hit the water at the bottom of the toilet seat. That's this right now. Dude, that's awesome. Dude, that does work. It works as far as I am concerned, right? Like, it shoots a little perfectly. I going to say, like, a little ahead, but I think it just always hits. Because it, it looks like it's about to go ahead, but then it actually hits, right? Or do some of them miss? I think it's more because my velocity changes. I think if you go in a straight line, it always hits, right? Yeah. Dude, that's sick. Yeah, if you have a constant speed, it will uh, it will always hit. Dude, that's sick. Obviously, it's going to miss a little bit if you move, because it's it can't predict that you're about to move. It's not like a Smash Brothers bot. Although, it feels like it kind of can. You have to do like these big like movements to, to dodge. Alright, that's, that's sick. That's so cool. Holy shit. 
What if I make it really slow then? Uh, weapon type. That's not bad. That's cool. That's really cool. Did I decide how I wanted to store the speed? Was I just going to make that like a type? You might be able to make a predict worse by sending the wrong speed to the prediction function. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, I was thinking it would be nice to like tune it so you could say like it takes a while to start hitting or it hits half the amount of time or whatever. Let's see what that does actually. Uh, predict it. This might not be necessary. Because in your function, you're already doing uh, zeroing out. Hello, CDCM. Is this... This isn't needed. <laughs> Never mind. How's it going? Let's, ch let's chuck in a lower projectile speed and see if that always hits. So I'm thinking it will. But I'm just curious to see how it looks when it's even slower. Oh, interestingly, it just, if it, I guess it's just not going to hit, right? Like, it, it calculates that it just isn't going to hit, so it just, I presumably, makes like zero, zero? That can't be right, can it? The graphics library is this. Oh, look, it can hit if you get close. That's probably right, right? Like, if, it, if, you're, if you're moving too quick, it just doesn't shoot. Might try another guard. Well, I'm thinking if um if projectile velocity is just zeros, then I just don't spawn the bullet. You know? Or I use a basic. Actually, let's see how that looks. Uh if start velocity is equal to vec 3 0 0.f. Well, hang on. It's possible it causes a calculation to produce not a number or infinite. If I'm just going to say, if it's going to be super slow, then use the uh, baked in. Use like the basic function. Like if it can't predict. That didn't work. I guess it's not zeros. Comparison against not a number is results in false. If it's... how do, Wait, is Nan a thing? That's just a... That can't be a thing, right? It is a thing. How do I call that? How does that work? If it's negative infinity... How do you check if something's not a number? Or do I have to do... Uh, do I have to make this not a number? Maybe. That didn't do it. There's all sorts of nans. It's better just to make it so you never get it in the first place. Okay. Sure. Uh, let's have a look then. A sign. Difference multiplied by y minus difference dot y multiplied by target. Why could this be the case? It's. I think it's just if it can't predict it, right? Or if it's like infinite, like it's the time it would take to hit is too high. Right? Because this has nothing to do with... This is... Hmm. What does a tangent two do? Hmm. It gets the angle of the vector. Hmm. What in here could be producing not a number then? I'm assuming it's just if it's like infinitely too big or infinitely too small. 
So maybe something that's using the projectile speed. Is it distance multiplied by that, maybe? The aim angle is just the unpredicted base angle. Oh, okay. Wait, could I just use that instead in the other function? Is that like a little lighter? Should I just be using that? A sign is the sign of an is the angles angle sign. Angle sign. Did not do this stuff in school. Can't believe it's finally biting me in the bum. Uh just make sure I am passing something in. Projectile speed. Fifty. As in arc sign, the inverse of sign. This is this is brand new knowledge to me. Arc sign? That's frightening. Terrifying. Okay. Well something's broken then, but if we just make it shoot fast enough for now, it's fine. I wonder what's is is slow enough to be considered too slow though. Oh, even 100 is too slow. We kind of lucked out getting 200 and deciding on 250, huh? Yeah, look, the moment you stand still, it's like, oh, we know where you're going. Yeah, look, if I'm like, if I'm looking in the top left and I dash to the right for a second, it really tries to shoot off. I guess it really does have to be something more like 200. Maybe I should make it even higher. Like 200 feels like it's barely hitting. I think if the arena was a bit bigger, this would be missing. But if I make this like 400, it should be like a straight laser beam, like attached to the player. Right? Yeah. This is something I could actually use for the player. Like, I could pick a particular Emmy that's, like, north and then closest to some line or something. I don't know how to do it. But, um... Or maybe just that. Maybe I just see which, uh... which enemy is closest to the player's X or something. And, uh, closest to Y. Oh, I guess I just... Oh, it's just the closest enemy. I get this is how you do, um... those nice, like, tracking shots, though. That's kind of cool. You think the argument needs to be between a minus one and a one? Can you check that? Oh, fire link. The argument to a sign. The argument to a sign, so all of this stuff. Or just anything being put in here. Uh, what do I, I'm just gonna call this uh, donut for a second. Oh wait, hang on, how do I clamp again? Standard clamp. What do I have to do donut is standard clamp donut. How does clamp work? Do I need to pass a pointer maybe? Or like a... Hang on. What's the difference between this and GLA? glm.clamp You probably don't even need the intermediate variable Hang on, what's gls glm, sorry, clamp glm clamp x minval y val Let's try this You said make sure it's a float, right? So I reckon this this works because I'm passing in the uh... no. Surely I need to pass in the reference to the original thing, don't I? Hang on. It doesn't modify in place. Yeah. Hang on. How do I do that in um? How do you do this in C plus plus? You can have in out in um Swift. What's the C plus plusy way to do that? Or do I just do donut equals? That probably works, doesn't it? Keep it, keep it Java. 
So if we're clamping it here, it should just go straight down if it can't aim, right? Yeah, look, look at that, I think. Hang on. Oh, that looks so cool. And the better you're tracking it, the more... <laughs> oh no, the more you spin, the uh, more efficient it gets at trying to chase you. <laughs> That's cool. It's funny that it seems to think you're going... The only way it's going to hit you is by basically firing straight to the side. No, this isn't right. Hang on. Why Why does me holding right here make it want to go into the top right? And me holding top right also make it want to go to the top right? Why is this the case? That seems really odd. Uh, sorry. Yeah, we can we can fix this now. Magic. Probably because it changes your velocity even though you don't move. I guess so. Like, my velocity is technically going to the right. Um... Even though I'm... I'm not. Should I take that into consideration? Should I actually... Instead of be, instead of using the player's velocity, should I use the difference between the player's last position and current position? Right? Because I'm tracking that in transform. Should I... Should I do that instead? I'm only tracking the last one position, so it's not very accurate. But I could at least check to see if they're the same. I.e. if the player hasn't been moving. You could fix that by setting velocity.x slash y to zero and making sure the enemy system runs after the collision system. Actually, that, that worked. That's a good idea, actually. Hang on. Oh, let's, let's try that. That seems a lot simpler to implement. Uh, enemy system after the, I guess, restricted movement system. So that, that runs last. So the enemies will be like a tick late on everything they do, which I don't, I don't think really matters, right? Um, maybe. It might matter. We'll see if it matters. I mean, that or I could just move this stuff down a bit. That's only really moving it down one. Whatever. Restricted movement system. Uh, if it's less than, set it here, and then... Oh, cock, I also need to pass in... So I, I can only check for stuff with physics then, right? So I also need to do const physics. Was it physics? Or did the player was the player using physics or linear? I think the player's using physics. <sighs> Does mean I'm restricted to Can I make it optional? Like I can't You can't, right? You could do a get if to check if the entity has a linear motion. Oh, Dude, that's even better. Because I don't want to restrict this restricted motion movement system to just um, physics objects. How do I do that? Get if. Let's have a look. Uh, what's this called? Entity dot. Get if. That's not it. Get if. That's not it. Get. If. Uh, entity uh, get if get if registry hang on maybe I can do it like this try get try get uh, physics for the entity here. Uh, auto uh, physics view like that. Very good. Unused. I think. I think it's rather unlikely that the player will be hitting, unless they're in the corner, most of the time they're only hitting one edge at a time. So I think only creating this object and checking in each individual if statement should be fine. 
I don't think it's necessarily worth me creating these in advance here. Because it seems like this is this is like an edge case. So I'm, I'm going to put this in here. Uh, what was... Are we going to do this whole thing again? No, never mind. So this is the physics view. Uh, physics view dot... Linear to velocity dot x equals zero. Does this work or do I need to inplay? Oh, it's already pointed it for me. That seems like it would work then, right? If this is a pointer. Physics view. What are you? Physics pointer. There you go. Never mind, we are using pointers today. <laughs> is that right? I think that's right, isn't it? Can I just do a uh, linear, uh, linear velocity dot x equals zero in this one line? Like this. I think I can. The idea is you have to check for null pointer, otherwise it's undefined if it doesn't exist. Oh. I can't do, like, dot let. <laughs> okay. Is there... There's no inline uh, checking for null in C++, is there? What can I do, like... There's no Elvis. I love Elvis operator, dude. Like, the more and more I use Kotlin, the more and more I, like, grow to love all the all the handy little one-liners. I saw like a post on Stack Overflow about someone complaining about all the Lambda statements. And I was like, brother, you you want you want to do like at overload and like construct a little object and every single time you want to bloody make a runnable? No, dude. I just want to use two curly braces. It's beautiful. Um, I've gotten really used to using the dot let thing lately. So you can be like, um, if this thing is an optional, like um, whatever, like that, you can do uh, whatever dot let, and this will only run if this is not null. So you can guarantee in here, you don't have to check for optionals. It's very comfy. I mean, you can also do this and then, you know, pass it in like that, but that's pointless. Well, I mean, if you're doing this, you can then, you have like it. I've gotten used to the syntax. I'm enjoying it a lot. Anyway, <clears throat> it doesn't matter. I'm just going to make a function called, do I need a function? Nah, fuck it. Copy and paste it. Try and get this entity. Ah, oh, bring me back here, dude. Uh, equals this. If physics entity is null, physics entity dot. Oh, oh, whoops. Oh, sorry, uh, null pointer. There must be a nice one liner for this, right? You had an idea in your language where the syntax would be if in x in whatever x dot etc. If x in whatever, x dot etc. As in, if, is this a, like a collection? Like if, if you have like a set or a list or something, if the x is in it, then do something with it. Because that is that is what the let thing in Kotlin would do. If you had like a list of, you know, lints, ints, for example. You know. Or whatever. Uh, you can actually do this. I, I really like this. You can, there's like a little comfy function called list of. Anything nullable with zero or one elements. Oh, cool. You could do um, list, uh, wait, hang on, list ints dot, I think dot get, and uh, let's say like the number of this, dot let. This, this would do that. It dot, you know, print it. Or you could do uh, my number, and then that, renames it that's that's what this does dude I should I did seriously think about coding woho in the language I know <laughs> I feel a lot less stupid but then what's the point of learning right I'm already learning that at work every day I work in it so I might as well strengthen some other skill you know even if it does make me look really stupid sometimes I promise you promise you, I know what I'm doing, just not in this language. Your equivalent would be if my number in 
the uh, int list print it. Yeah, that would be cool. List int stock get. Nice. Okay. Um, can I just make you like a VIP or something? Does that let you? Can you try typing a link? I don't know what VIPs do. If I've accidentally given you admin rights, um, please don't use them. But I thought VIPs can post links. That seemed to work. Try posting what you posted earlier without... Um... Yay, there you go. It's not because you're important or anything. Don't get ahead of yourself. Yeah, there you go, that works. It's just going to make this a lot less tedious, I think. Alright, poggers. Okay, fuck. Cool, 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 cool. What was I doing? Restricted movement system. Here we go. So I'm going to... Ba -ba -ba -ba. Make a function here. Well, I'm going to put it underneath. But uh, void... Uh... Stop moving. Uh, zero. Uh, halt velocity. And I'm just going to pop this stuff in there. I'm going to need to pass in the registry. Uh, auto entity. And then I uh, halt velocity. I need to pass in if I want it to be the X or the Y. So, I mean, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Oh, hang on. You can use a shorthand. If thingy equals... If I do that, can I then access that... Um... Auto physics entity? Okay, hang on a second. Whoops. Does this construct it in the in the if statement here? Use template keyword to treat try get as a dependent template name. You still have to use it as opposed to dot. Wait, what like this? Wait, hang on, sorry. Um I'm just gonna do this. <laughs> uh, halt Y and halt X. Just keep it simple. Stupid. It's due to registry being a generic argument. Ah, okay. There you go. To make it even happier. Oh, it just says it's unused. Uh, so if this exists, uh, if halt X, then halt x if halt y halt y statement should be inside braces okay can I just highlight this line and start technically okay seems needless but whatever So, technically, I could have a little flag here and check if halt x, uh, like halt x, you know, like auto uh, bool halt x equals zero, uh, false, bool halt x, y equals false, and then set them in here, set them in here, set them in here, set them in here, and then like if either of those are uh, true, then run the function. But I'm thinking I can just run it on each. I don't think that's particularly expensive. Uh, and oh, you say you want to do it by reference. You don't want me to pass the entire thing by value in, huh? I guess it doesn't really matter with the entity, but I'll do that anyway. Uh, halt velocity. I need registry entity uh, true false, and I will drop this down here because that's how I like it. 
This has no member. Oh, it's not marked const. Okay. X. Y. X. Y. Alright. Tell me about this, right? Because usually only either none of these are getting set off, like 99.9% .9 of the time, none of these are getting set off. So the function basically ends here. Sometimes the player will hit the bottom or the left. So one of these will get set off. You'll never get three of them getting set off because the player can't hit three walls at a time. So there's a maximum of two of them. So it seems kind of pointless to like... To track and only run this once at the end, you know? The most expensive thing in this is probably the extra branches by those two ifs because a branch prediction miss will cause the execution to stall. The extra branch is caused by those two ifs. What, these? Well, in which case then, let's just do whole x and whole y. That's, that's fine then. No need to beat around the bush. Let's just do this. I mean, I guess I was thinking about this like an idiot. That's fine. Relatable. How are you doing, Bikerami? I could probably have this in its own function. But now we're really fucking with gas. Hello. I don't like when it pretends it's not going to type, but then it actually does type. I hate that. Do it or don't. Make up your mind. If you're lucky, the optimizer might optimize it to something like this. What? Hey, her work. Oh, God. What's wrong? Are you spooked out? What is this Demon Souls creature? Is this the old monk? This thing looks frightening. You have to buy a new roof. What's wrong? Alright, anyway. I haven't run the game in a while. Just see if this works. Yep, that seems to have fixed it. The player's velocity is indeed zero now when you are touching a wall. Although I think if you go next to it, technically it's not going to be zero, right? But then that's fine. Because the issue was that you were holding... Oh, you had a velocity while you weren't moving. Here we go. This means if I want to decide the player sprite based on velocity, it looks like they'll look like they're stopped moving when they're walking against a wall. Which might look a little funny. So maybe I won't do that. Dude, this is sick. It's like a bullet hell game. Or something. Kind of stressful. Because you know that they will hit you if you stop dodging. Dude, the pattern's kind of mesmerizing. Alright. The roof is wrong! What did Buddy do? What did he do? Your young son. Your own Buddy. You want to show something cool that you can't? Why don't you explain why it's cool, but without any proprietary news? Alright, that's dope as heck. Absolutely super dope. Super fumo dope. Alright, uh... Boss pattern acquired. Let's... The boy has no concept of roof. He cannot look up that far. I bet he knows more than you think. I bet that pupper. I bet he's really thinking. Oh. Boom. <laughs> Something like that. God, scary playlists today, dude. Guinevere. All right, all right, all right. Aight, aight, aight.
this music kind of freaks me out a bit. Try what happens if you have a projected speed that's faster than the actual projected speed. Well, I'm assuming it would aim off, but yeah, let's see what it looks like. Uh... Alright, so let's actually set the bullet velocity to 200. Let's do player velocity multiplied by like 1.1. So it's a little faster. That looks kind of freaky, doesn't it? Okay, let's try like a little... Let's try like quite a lot faster. Let's make it 150. You can pass 200 to get predicted aim angle if you use like 150 on the actual start velocity. What, sir? Dude, this is kind of freaky. Well, it just means the bullets will fire slower then. So the angle would be right, but the bullets will never hit. Okay, let's actually try making them way faster, like 300. Oh, I don't like it. It's it's kind of like an aimbot. <laughs> Do you feel like a little like a little threatened by this? Like it's it knows exactly how it would hit the player, but the bullets are just a little bit too quick, so it just about misses. It's kind of unsettling, isn't it? Like you'll never hit it unless you're right inside of it. There's some, something about this like instantaneousness is is actually like. It's kind of frightening. I'm going to make something in the player movement so it doesn't normalize it. Um, if your X or Y velocity is zero. Is it this bit? So if it's not zeroed out, normalize it. How would I do that efficiently? Do I just do like... You have to change the order of the systems already and it should work. I'm kind of curious to see if this kind of sketchy me method does work. Because if it's zero, it won't normalize. Right? Nah, it doesn't... One. Two. One. Two. Yeah, that no, doesn't do anything. Alright, whatever. You have to change the order of the systems and it should work already. Why? Why would that be the case? Physics and movement. What pattern are we trying to make here? We're not trying to make a pattern. We were just trying to make the bullets lead. The reason you get slower is because the system thinks the velocity isn't zero. Oh. So I just need to put the physics stuff, like this stuff, after. No, but it needs to come after the restricted movement system. No, that doesn't work though, no, because the res restricted movement system, if it runs before the physics update, then the physics update will make you look like you're going out of bound for a frame. Unless I wanted to run it twice, which, I don't know if you can do that. What does that do? What happens if you run the same? It says make unique, so... I didn't fix it. 
Let's let's just try it. But I'm thinking this will make the player like wobble into the wall, won't they? What's wrong? I think he will run. He won't. Running it twice is an option. I don't like that. Why are you complaining? You're saying it's unused. Is that really what your issue is? That's not really why you were having an error, is it? Well, running the velocity correction the first time and then the position correction. Mm. Mm. I don't like any of those options. Sorry, why isn't this actually compiling? Can you can you tell me like really though? Oh, it's the game's running. Okay. Yeah, I, I got it. Don't worry. Yeah, look. Oh, hang on. You like player like sticks in the wall for a second. Do you see that? You have to run the um, the restricted code after. Or, yeah. Also, this doesn't fix the slowdown. I thought that would, considering what you said. Um... Maybe in here, I don't just halt the velocity, but I also... Unnormalize the Y? No. <laughs> that's not... I don't think that's really an option. Uh... Should I? I could keep track of two velocities. I could have a normalized one and an unnormalized one. But that also seems stupid. I could just set a flag to not use the normalized one, but that... I hate that. I hate that. Or I could have a flag where it's like, if the player's against a wall, I set a flag on the player saying they're against a wall. But that's also stupid. Don't do that. Yeah. These are ways that might fix it, though. But I'm not, I'm not going to implement it. I refuse. Okay. That's cool. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make it so... I'm going to stop the enemy from firing because it's just filling up the screen. Uh, which I'm going to do very simply by uh, removing their weapon. Great. Um, I could even... Dude, for every enemy with a weapon and a sprite, draw a weapon sprite. Not that I'm going to do that because this is a bullet hell, but that is, I guess, how you do that, right? You'd have If you had like enemies that could pick weapons up off the floor, you'd have the enemy collide with it, and then you'd give them that component, and it would immediately draw. That's kind of... I kind of like that. Um, but I'm not going to do that for now. Unless I wanted enemies to change guns. Does this game use guns? I don't think it was using guns. Maybe it uses guns. Maybe you're being shot at. It's kind of violent. Um, kind of hard to do in pixel art too. Anyway. <clears throat> We're going to make it so the player bullet can intersect with an enemy and moider them and destroy the bullet. Okay. That's something we can do. So let's get started. I don't know how to start. Let's have a think. Let's think about the bullet. We've got these collision things, but they're not doing anything. What does collision mean here? Hmm. Should I change collision to mean bullet target? Like, can be hit by bullet? Or like, a player bullet target and enemy bullet target? Or just bullet target, and then I check to see if it's an enemy or a player, I suppose. And not 
alternatively. Um, so if we if we take collision here to mean can be hit by a bullet, then we have a system called bullet collision system, or just collision system. We check for every bullet. I see. Oh god, no! Now we're getting into proper game dev stuff, right? Because we—I don't remember how we did. I think I remember you saying in Woho because the game's actually quite limited. We really could just check for collision every single tick against every single object on screen, because it's a relatively small number of operations in the whole scheme of things. But I still kind of hate that. But then again, the alternative to that is is implementing a better collision system, like the one where you slice the screen into uh, coordinates or whatever. The easiest thing is to do a loop where you go through each bullet and check against every other object. We can do that for now. I mean, I guess that's the whole over-optimization thing, right? If we want to get a working prototype, we can just do this slightly lazy route where we just check everything against everything. And if it turns out we have significant frame rate issues, we can maybe look into implementing something better further down the line. But I don't want to, like, overwhelm myself with the thoughts of collision detection. Okay. So. <clears throat> I want to do this properly, because I kind of hated how I did it in WoHo. You could have a quad tree you have lying around, which you could use as a broad phase accelerator. Dude, quad trees? Actually, I find collision detection stuff really interesting, actually. I did like a lot of. Re I don't know why. <laughs> I, used to, I used to consume a lot of collision detection related content at uni. As strange as it is to say, I remember very little of that. Okay. I. I'm gonna say. I want a. Do I need a bullet? Component? Because I'm thinking, right? This is my thought. If I want to make it as basic as possible... I have all the sprites, yeah. I've gotten somewhere else. If I want to make it as basic as possible, I can have maybe collision or collision types. Everything with that's a collision will have a collision size for now. We can just say it's a like a radius. We can just make everything circular just to simplify things. And we just check the distances between things to see if it matches. It's super simple. I can easily make it so the players and enemies have a, a hitbox size. And I could easily make it so bullets have a hitbox size. But then I'm checking bullets against bullets. And do bullets hit bullets? No. So. I. For every bullet. Actually, I think I've solved my own issue, right? I'm thinking in the bullet system class, we have a for loop going over every. Oh, sorry, in the collision system, we have a for loop going over every collision, including weapon, including bullets, including players, including enemies. So everything being looped through. But I exclude anything. No, wait. I was going to say I exclude anything that um, is a player or a enemy, so I'd be functionally only getting bullets. And then in that list, I'd do the, I'd do the loop again but only look for the enemies uh, or only look and only look for the players in two separate loops. I still need a way to decide if the... Okay, here's another thought. I don't know if this is that stupid or not. But I could make it so collisions... Hmm... I could make it so bullets keep a reference to the entity that shot them. And then that they never collide with the thing that shot them, but then enemies will be able to shoot each other. But I guess that's how I'd implement that, because that works in, like, some games do that, right? They make it so enemies can shoot each other, but in bullet hells that might make the enemies a bit short-lived. Two bit sets which say I belong to these layers, I belong to uh, collide with these layers. And then you can check to see if two objects should collide by bitwise anding the layer mass together. Hmm. Should I only restrict myself to two teams though? 
I guess I can have multiple. Perhaps for now I don't worry about that, and I do just restrict myself to two teams, like the player side and the enemy side. So enemies can't shoot each other, players can't shoot each other. Um, I make it so when you spawn a bullet, it's given the... Oh, sorry, the reason it's a bit set is so you can have 32 or whatever layers. Okay. Oh yeah, t uh... Two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. One for each bit, yeah, like, one, yeah, 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 and then, yeah, okay, okay. Is this... <laughs> we did bitwise stuff for the keyboard stuff before, I kind of missed that. I still think I might re-implement that, or maybe I have, like, a toggle. Because I did like the overriding, like if you went left and then held right, you'd move right, and then if you held left, you'd move left, rather than being cancelled out. I might implement that later. Like, not today, but in the future. I still think it was cool. Okay. Let's move on. Um, collision. We're going to have a... Uh... What's the best way to do this? How does a uh, bitwise, not bitwise, sorry, what bits at? Standard size bits, uh, eight, 32, 32 bit. No, wait, hang on. What, how, do, how do bit sets in C++ work? I, I don't know if I've used one. Bit set. Bits, not bit, not like a fucking screwdriver. <laughs> Hang on. The class bit set represents a fixed size num sequence of bits. Bit sets can be manipulated by standard logic operators, so like and or, etc., zor, all that lot. It's just a fancy wrapper for an in. Okay. Lowest index on the right, as is the binary representation of integers. Okay. So I want an eight. I don't want an eight bit boy then, right? Or does then does that mean I'm limiting myself to? Sorry, you said it can have up to 32 of, you said, or whatever. Okay, okay. Well, let's just do, we could do two for now if we just want two teams and we could adjust this later, I suppose. Uh, bit set, we're gonna do, we're gonna call this, uh, I'm just gonna call this layer. Uh, how, how do I write this? Do I, do I write it like, I feel like you write some weird fucking syntax. Um, do you write it like 0b? Like this? Okay. So it's just uh, that, maybe. A bit set. Oh, you can also maybe construct it like this, as like a string. I think. I'm just reading the docs on the side. This doesn't seem to work. Despite what the docs say. Um, you could also just alias using layers equals you in 8t or whatever and then define an enum. Yeah, I was thinking an enum to say that you're on player team or whatever would make the most sense. Um. Oh, I don't even need to call it a bit set. I just, just, just say it's a unsigned 8-bit in. Um. Hey, Flynn. Whoops, sorry. Collision. Uh, enum class layers. Uh, enemy player. This one. Do I have to write it like this?
Do you think it'll work if you remove the equals sign? Oh. Hello. How are you? Player is one. Enemy equals... You can also do one... Uh, chevron, chevron, one for two. One, chevron, two. Oh, it just means, like, place it in that position. So you do... Uh, what did you write? One into one. One into two. One into three. One into... What if I type another number in here? Does this just fail? No, that's allowed. Does that fill them out? Like, if I would... Would this just crash? No. Hang on. How do, Would that... Or would this set the enemy... Well, hang on, how does that work? Yes, the left shift operator. So it's like, sh literally shift it that many times to the left. So this is shifting it to be the first position. It takes whatever the bit pattern of the left thing is and shift it the bits to the left. This is scary stuff. Oh, hang on, would this not need to be zero? So shift, don't shift it left. Shift it left once. Shift it left twice. Shift it left three times. Shift it left four times. Five times. Six times. Seven times. Is there a shorthand for this? Unused. I'm just going to write these for now, just as like quite like filler. Just to remind myself if I do decide to have other teams and stuff later. Some people make a macro for like bits one, but I think that's a bit overkill. Yeah, this is this is fine. No, I don't need to do this. It's just practice. Okay, uh, ba -ba 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 layers. Is there a way to force people from using this in there? Maybe not. Because this is just a num. It's just an in. It's an enum. I assume. Could I, instead of a two here, could I do layers dot like count? <laughs> is that. Like, make a bit set of the size of every number of enum children. Is that a. Uh... Like all cases, you get you get what I'm getting at with that, right? So if I if I decide to add more teams later, this would like increment itself. Identifies starting with an underscore and a capital reserved for implementation, so technically it's undefined. Oh, okay, sorry. It doesn't just mean private. Don't look at this super secret. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Oh no, actually, you said there wasn't a there wasn't an all cases thing in C right? C++, enum, all cases. Uh, all uh, values. Sadly, you can't get the size of an enum, but you can add it yourself like all. Nah. That's that's exactly the same as me just... Um, that's just the same as me just typing it manually, right? Alright. Alright. So we can now say if the thing is a enemy or a player should we take it a step further than that and do enemy bullet player bullet or is that extra stupid i think it's extra stupid is it okay right back to my like original idea you think it makes sense because things don't need to collide with things on the same layer as themselves Okay, here's a thought, right? You could say I'm a player bullet, I collide with enemies but not enemy bullets. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I was thinking, am I not already defining that these things are bullets by them not being an enemy or a player component? Right? Maybe it's fine. Just go with the simple solution. This this is easy. Dark Souls music. It's because you showed up, Waste. 
Let's just go with a simple solution. If you put that information in the collision layers, then the collision detection system doesn't need to know about the components. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, this keeps it a bit more fluid. I, I, I don't know. I like I like the components. I want to use them. But okay. So when I'm defining something with collision now, I need to say what layer it, what collision layer it falls under, right? Let's also make. I think I already have a collision system, don't I? I do. Dope. Collision can happen in tick. That's fine. It doesn't need to be an update. I think. I mean, we could put it in update if it turns out that bullets are going through things, and that's a common issue. But for now, let's not worry about it. Uh, for every enemy with a collision and a transform that might just be it and then I'll write a big to do in here oh I can keep this dot destroy thing in here oh shit oh, hang on dot contains dude I could do rectangular boys um we're not doing that for now but we can do we'll just do a to do here I, I want to do this iteratively there's a dot contains for circle too. Is there a point? Should I, I was just going to calculate the distance and just see if it was right, or am I being stupid? Cause, okay, sorry, I forgot. Collision. I was going to have. That's what circle does. Okay, I guess it's just easier to read. Uh, I wanted to have um, radius. Uh, do I want an in or a float? Let's make it in. Uh, hit, not hit circle. Um, radius. This is how many units? Pixels? Transform units, they are apart. Units in transform. <laughs> Alright, um, so, who's using collision? Template factory. You should all fail now, because you're using collision, but you're not defining stuff. Right? Okay, it did compile. That's weird. But whatever. Um, we'll type this in. We're going to write a little uh, collision. Oi, oi. Collision. Dot layer equals uh, collision layers player. Dot radius. Oh, equals, I don't know, like eight. Oh, hang on, sorry. Do I need to... How do I do bitwise? Hang on. Um... Hang on, can I not just set it? No viable conversion from layers to bitwise. The point of specifying the bit values in the layers was that you could directly use them in a UIN 8T. If you're going to use bit set, the value should be sequential. But it might be a bit unergonomic to use bit set with an E. Okay, okay, okay. So I just need to set this to a UIN 8. I know all the eights are un unneeded, but the idea here, right, is so if you're a player, this would look, if you're an enemy, this would be like one at the end. If you're a player, it would be like this. If you're an enemy bullet, like this. A player bullet, like that, right? I think. You should work then, right? You can do binary lit integer literals with a zero B prefix. Invalid digit B in octal constant. Binary integer literals. Do I just want to make this a, like a byte? Oh, you mean if I want to literally write out the binary? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I did earlier, right? When I was typing up here. I did... Uh, 
Well, I did zero zero, I guess, for a two bit. Is that a nibble? A pair? I don't fucking remember. So this would be player, I suppose. That's handy. I, I've uh, I've not done that actually. So technically, I'm actually saying that enemy is this. This this is the same as this. I feel like I'm learning. It's a good thing. Anyway, this is the same as this as well. Layers need to be a regular non-scoped enum to work. Oh. Well, like this. Yeah? Could I say it's a collision layers to force people using it? Does this... No, I guess not. I thought... I thought that could work. Actually, maybe it does work. That works, right? You can keep it in the collision struct, just remove the one class. Oh, okay. Cool. I thought I wanted to force people to use the names, but... I guess I don't need that. This should work then, right? So people aren't people. So people aren't manually typing in binary shit to construct this. That should work then, right? Oh, it's called collision layers, right? I think. Hang on. Is it not still collision? I'm going to go back to calling this layers, I think. Well, actually, I mean, this is just a layer. This doesn't work because you can't do bit mice arithmetic on enums. But you can make an alias for you in 8T. Jesus. Here. Oh. Like that. Can we go back to drawing triangles? Yeah. You know what? Let's just go back to the world of simplification. Alright? This should be fine. This isn't worth us spending time on. This is pedanticity. Fine, if you've typed it out, I can't, like, not use it. Using layers... Wait, this is what I wrote earlier. I guess with that. Sure. What's wrong? Can I convert from float? Oh, whoops. I guess I used float for collision in my last thing. How about now? That should build. Cool. Uh, enemy bullet. I guess here I'm not specifying who owns the bullet. So let's just make it a player bullet for now. Same size, sure. 
Uh, test enemy. Collision. And you are an enemy. I'm also going to go to the screen rendering system. This is something that really pissed me off in old Woho. We didn't have like a good way to show hitboxes. Like idiots we were. But now we can sort of infer it, right? We can say after you've drawn the sprite for every entity with a sprite, a transform and a collision. Whoops. Uh, const collision. For everything with a collision, I want to draw a circle. Did You had like a circle somewhere, right? It could even be its own debug drawing system. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's perfect. Um, for now, I'm just obviously going to leave it in. But yeah, absolutely. And I could just do like, at like build time, like if it's a debug build, or if I've enabled it in a settings or something, I could add the, I could add the system or not. It's like an overlay, I suppose. It's a debug overlay. What did you call a circle? Did you have a shape? What am I looking at? Is it not in graphics, maybe? Hang on. Lib donut. Circle. 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 Come on. Show me the circle. Donut slash shapes. Just circle float should work. Oh, yeah. Well, it's going to be an in in this case. Oh, whoops. What do you need for a constructor? Radius, I'd assume. Length. Wait, hang on. Do you not need a size? You didn't add circle drawing, sorry. Yeah, I meant drawing a circle. Only rectangles. Okay, how did you draw the rectangles? Maybe I can just reuse that. Uh, donut rectangle. Where's the draw? I think I draw a rectangle here, don't I? Graphics rectangle instance. Hmm. Draw a rectangle. What does draw require? Draw requires... Oh, this one just asks for a rectangle instance. Quad instance. Hmm. Could I make a circle, like a really big circle sprite and scale it? Circle's complicated because it needs a different ve vertex buffer. Everything else is just a quad. Yeah, seeing that. Circle sprite would work. How would I be 100% certain that the circle sprite is scaled properly? Can I just rely on whatever function you've got for me to set the width and height? I'm going to assume that's the case. Let's uh, go to textures. Open in file explorer. I guess I should get Aspire open quickly. No? I mean, let's just go on Google fucking images. Um, circle PNG. Thank you, Wikipedia. I don't know why it's called LOL Circle, but I'm going to steal it. That's a circle. If you draw it as a rectangle instance with the texture on it, it will use the exact size you give it. Kind of cursed, but okay. Okay. 
Get out of here. Hmm, hmm. Pling, pling, plong, pling. Pling, plong, pling, plong. Pling, plong, plong, pling, plong. Plong, plong, plong. Plong, plong. Collision dot radius multiplied by two. Uh, vec two, vec two. Uh I need to give it a texture. How does textures work again? I don't fucking remember. I'll work that out in a second. So it needs to be at the uh, transform. I guess it doesn't need to have a sprite. We can get rid of that. Just anything with a transform and a collision. Uh, so technically, if we had invisible hitboxes, we could do that this way. We could show them this way. Uh, how would I do this then? Atlas sprite ID. I guess I could just add it as a sprite ID to the Atlas. Maybe? Is that allowed? No. What do you ask for? You ask for a texture explicitly. I guess I could just make a texture. Load the texture from an image and store it as a member variable in the system and then pass a pointer in the draw call. That's probably for the best, yeah. Texture uh, is a circle texture. Alright, where have I got a texture somewhere else that I couldn't rip? Maybe Template Factory? Well, I can at least get this. Let's make sure this is the same. Textures slash... Enemy system. I want the screen rendering system. Uh, here we go. Uh, let's have this texture up here. Texture. Uh, texture. Uh, circle sprite is called uh, circle. Dot PNG. Uh, circle texture is texture. Dot dot load. How do I do this? Have a look at the docs. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. texture. Oh, you've just written it. Who needs dogs? Texture, circle texture. Oh, it's just by constructing it, you are implicitly, you build it in the constructor. Image loader. No, image load dynamic range. Sorry. Um, circle sprout. Path? Hello. Um, dot flip vertically. Hello. Did I write my own rendering system? No, Donut did. I'm stealing his work without credit. <laughs> also, hello, Yetta. Yeah. You can write all that directly as a member variable in the class definition. I guess I don't have to think about like life cycle. In in my head, right? You think about like Android and stuff. You don't, you don't, you don't do that. You you wouldn't you wouldn't do that. But I don't need to think like that. I guess. It does look cool. How are you, Yetta? I'm gonna do. Plonk. Uh, 
Something feels a little weird about programming to this music. I feel like I'm about to like... It's like everyone's about to drink like a bunch of soup or something and die a horrible death. Do you get that idea? This is like a cult meeting. You feel like you're in a cult. I think the graphics shorthand should work because you included the aliases thing. Oh yeah? I think I did use GFX somewhere else actually. So, circle texture is... Do I need to explicitly mention? Not viable. Oh, what's... You don't need the equals. Oh, you just you just do this. Whoa. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Image loader. Do you um, image LDR? Sorry. Did you need something else? But don't show me where it's removed. Show me where it is. Oh fuck's sake. Oh, I need to put the flip vertically thing into there. Right? Oh no, wait, hang on. This needs to be in its own curly braces, I think. Yes. What's wrong? Expected a semicolon. Did you? Okay, that works. That was messy. Uh, hey, Wolfenstein. Hey. Pretty good, how about yourself? I'm alright. I'm a little snoozy. Sorry, I just punched the mic. But I'm looking forward to a, a comfy weekend of doing nothing. <laughs> I go to the bakery tomorrow. We've got... Oh, chat, did I tell you? Bloody hell. I was so upset this morning. I... Speaking of angelic, cosy fucking whatever, I was so fucking upset. Did I put it on... Recent? Where is it? Ah, chat. Look at, look at this. Do you know what this is? All right, we have no food in the house. All I've been eating today is... I've cooked like an enormous thing of rice and I've just been eating it with like I like at first I did it with like some like you know rice wine vinegar and stuff and like a fried egg and some spring onion and then I made like some egg fried rice with it later and then I had that twice like it's been one of those days where you just you've just got nothing but I got so excited this morning because I found in the freezer that we had two frozen croissants uh pan chocolates like the ones that are par baked and you have to bake them for 20 minutes so I was I was so hyped. I was so excited to have some delicious pan of chocolates to get my Friday going. And I put them in the oven and I put in 180 centigrade and I put in 15 minutes and I hit start and then about 10 minutes later the house was filled with smoke and something smelled horrible and it turns out the oven had changed itself to the microwave setting and it had microwaved these frozen pan of chocolates for 10 minutes on a metal plate. Don't know how it didn't blow up, but it didn't. Thank you, modern t tech. But like, I was so upset. I was, I couldn't wait. I was so hungry and excited for chocolate and pastry. And instead I got a burnt rock that smelled horrible and filled the house with smoke. And I had to open all the windows and it's cold and misty. So the house was now filled with cold mist. It was like a real slap. That was horrible. A terrible way to start the day. Um. And then I, uh, what else? I forgot to take my lunch break. So I was going to stop half an hour early. I like, started running a bath, started frying my stir fried rice. And then I got called into a fucking Teams meeting. So I didn't, I had to work the full, I had to work over my break. And at which point I had to stop cooking and my bath went a bit cold. And also I got stressed because I bought this here. This here, this new controller. And Amazon said it was going to deliver like later this evening. So I was like, cool, I'll get in my bath. And then they sent me a text saying that the driver was on their way. So I had a really stressful bath sitting there thinking, oh God, the bell's going to go off. I'm going to have to get out of this bath, greet the man in my nude. But um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, this is how I always start the streams. But today we're doing it two hours in. I'm talking about my day. <laughs> That's the story. Anyway, this is, this is the controller I got, by the way. It's a eight... Bitdo Ultimate or something. I'm upset about having all these old, moldy, like used Xbox controllers that don't work and are smelly. So I got this fancy one with Hall Effect sticks and Bluetooth and 3.4 gigahertz and Rumble and analog 
joysticks. So I'm going to take it with me on my traveling adventures this year so we can do uh, GameCube emulation and stuff and play console games. It'll be good. I already bumped it into Dolphin and it plays Ocarina of Time perfectly fine. Is it good? It's fantastic so far. Like, it feels good. I wasn't, I wasn't sure because it's a third party controller. I know about 8-bit though, though, because they they always make those like knockoff like Super Nintendo controllers that use USB. But they've been going for a while, and like this this D-pad, people always talk about how like nice this D-pad is. They're right. Like this this feels like you feel this. I don't know if you can hear the sound it makes. Probably not, right? Mm. I don't know if you can hear that. This feels like a really good, like, this feels like what I imagine a Game Boy Advance felt like brand new in 2002. My one obviously is old now, but like, D-pad's lovely, the sticks feel great. These feel so much better than like a PlayStation 4. It, it's nice in the hand. I think I held TK's Switch Pro controller at one point and I thought it flared really weirdly. This just goes like down, so it's like an Xbox controller. Triggers are nice, buttons are snappy. It's not perfect, because I'm quite used to an Xbox 360 controller now, but I'll get used to it. Like, I'm not used to having paddles at the back. But, it's got all the switches I need, so I can use it for the Switch and for the PC and for emulation and stuff. And I think it works with my phone as well, and I don't know. Should be good. Should be good for a little bit of gaming. Like, if I need to, if I'm going to play some randomizer on the 24 hour train flight, uh, plane flight, that will work. Uh, anyway, sorry, we were programming, right? <laughs> Sorry, I forgot for a second. Uh, Alright, circle texture. Cir texture equals circle texture. I think you will build, I think. I think, like, maybe you just don't need this semicolon. I, I get that, but... Well, hang on. What? Who are you? No, that's correct, actually. Paddles are great. It makes TFT playable on controller because you can jump and look around at the same time. I've never used them. You know, I've, I've, I'm not really used to it. But yeah, it's, it seems cool. It works nice in Genshin. Like I had been using my... I threw it somewhere. I had been using my like knockoff Switch Pro controller, but it drifts like mad. Like the control stick is like up here as the center instead of in the middle. And I want to use my GameCube controller, but it's missing a bunch of buttons, so it just doesn't work with stuff like Genshin. Plus, for some reason, the the sticks are in, inverted. They're like, rotate at 90 degrees. I don't know why. Like, this controller I bought would have been perfect if it had a GameCube button layout, but alas, they use the modern Xbox style, and I guess that's fine, but... I like, uh... Well, Nintendo controller is an app, so this... This... I wish I could take this with me when I'm traveling, but I'm not going to bring this and a converter. Oh my god. This GameCube controller is ancient, by the way, but it looks so fucking clean. It's Oh my god. It's like ASMR. It, it feels good as well. Like, so good. I love GameCube controllers. I wish I could use it in everything. I played Hades with this. But, um... It just misses a bunch of inputs. You can't play Genshin with it. You can't, like, move left in menus or um, open the select menu and for some reason as I said like the viewing like the C stick is rotated uh, sorry uh, what's wrong ISO C++ field designators to be specified wait hang on what's actually wrong uh, cannot convert from initializer list to rectangle instance sorry what if I make you a Wait, hang on. Texture goes first. That's... Okay. No viable conversion from graphics texture to donut graphics texture. That can't be a right... Can it? All right, I guess I'll make it a donut graphics texture. Oh, wait, hang on. Is that what the issue is? This doesn't... Oh. 
This is a horrible debug message. It wraps around here and then shows a pointer here. What the fuck? <laughs> what? Okay, tell me you wouldn't read this as cannot convert from texture to texture. And the only difference here, I guess if you really notice, there's no end of speech. That's so stupid. <laughs> That's really stupid. Okay, fine. How do I fucking do that? All right. I think you can convert. I think if you try your best, you will. Yeah, I thought so. All right. What's wrong? You are unused. How about I do a... Wait, actually, hang on. Is this actually what's wrong here? I don't... I don't think it being unused should be the error. Missing semicolon before. Wait, hang on. Is that actually the issue? Maybe it's here. Uh, spawn test enemy is not a member of template factory. What? Oh, good fucking lord, what is happening in here? Good lord, what is happening in there? What the fuck? What is wrong? Registry, undeclared identifier. Oh, fucking hell. What's going wrong? Illegal member initialization. What the fuck? Is it something you're including, or is it you? It's always hard to tell. Oh, the music ended. Probably a syntax error in a high-level header like components. Yeah, I'm thinking it's something that's being included, because this seems a bit sus. Chuck on some Toho's. There we go. You are including components. You say you have an error. Maybe common? Wait, hang on. Oh, this is a erroneous include. I guess I can get rid of it. Is that really the issue though? I wish it would just tell me what the error is. Show at the top. Syntax error. Close bracket. Okay, maybe it's this. This is so hard to read. Is it just this? Is that it? Hang on. Is it everywhere else I've put entity? Is it a bit wrong? No, that looks fine. What about you? Collision. You. That should work then, right? Okay. God, this fucking language is like... You miss one bloody semicolon and it like sets fire to your house. You go to sleep. Hey, look, hitboxes. <laughs> Dude, the position's wrong. Kinda. Well, maybe not. Maybe the position's totally right. Uh, okay. Hey, Fire. How you doing? Good night, PPP. Um... I guess it's just drawing it at the position. Let's hang on. Let's have a look. How's it drawing it? Hey, uh, hello. Is the the transform position is the bottom left, right? Like that's zero zero, right? A little sick, but not much. Oh, dude, what's wrong? What about you? I'm I'm fine. I'm a bit snoozy, but. Such as life. Maybe I read some manga and watch TV after the stream. I don't know. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna vibe and chill. I've been feeling good. You can tell I've been feeling okay because I've done three programming streams in a row, uh, and it's nice because I did Osu yesterday. So that means today is my recovery day. So it means on Saturday, I can play it as long as I want. 
which is exciting. Can't wait. I think I think it's possible my Osu pen is broken, but I can't. I still can't tell if it's a skill issue or not, because I have worn away this tip, like a lot. I, I don't think you can see. There's not enough lighting going into this thing. Hang on, maybe I can light it up with my phone. Can you? Can you see this thing? This thing is worn down a lot. This nib is like half the size it used to be, and it's starting to show bare plastic. Um, so it's possible that this is actually just broken, because sometimes I feel like when I'm trying to aim with this, I'll like point at a thing and I'll move to a position and back and forth and back and forth. And it'll feel a little bit like as I angle the pen, it like wiggles weird like this. It doesn't look pointy. Yeah, I considered buying a new one because Wacom now has like simplified their line. They only sell like two pens now instead of like 50. I think I could buy a replacement for this for like 25 pounds and then some flex nibs for like a fiver. But I don't know if I want to spend 30 pounds on something that might not be broken. I'm not that baller. Um, I'm honestly, right now my biggest stress is this like external, mo this like portable monitor I bought. Like all the reviews say they fight, it smashes like really easily and it like never works. So far, mine, it's been working for me, but I'm a bit stressed because it was an expensive piece of care. Can I just replace the tip? There's nothing to put the tip in. The bit that you'd put the tip in would be like up here. This this pen is is shrunk. There is the the, the tip doesn't exist. There's there's no hole. The hole is, you, you know, I don't know how if I'm describing it quite right. Maybe I can draw it. Uh, window capture. What have you done to that pen, Osu? All right, so this is a pen, right? Usually, right, you chuck a pen nib in the end like this. Yeah? But I don't like how that feels in Osu. Plus, I'm like pretty sure that when you press down with a pen in it, like the nib, like this, I think when this presses the contact point at the bottom, it increases input lag. So I just removed it. However, over time, this got worn like down. If I like scribble this in maybe like this, this like nib without this like hard bit of plastic, it just slowly started like chipping away over time like this until eventually this like weird core of like a hard plastic on the inside that you can't normally see has started to like emerge like this. And that's that's where the pen currently is. So I'm wondering if it's broken or not. Um, I, I just can't tell if it's because I'm bad that I'm missing or if the pen's broken. It's really hard to tell. There's no objective way to test without like a 3D printer to draw lines. Yeah, I only use it for Osu. I've got an actual like Android tablet, like a Samsung S8 Plus or something, uh, with like a little S Pen if I wanted to do art. Um, so this 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 cheap ass little dingle. This is my Osu thing. I'm kind of pissed. I don't know why we don't have an Osu actual tablet yet. Like this is quite cheap. This was like 35 quid, I think. Super cheap. My like old 480 was like 50. And then I had like an XP pen that was quite expensive. But this thing only has 144 hertz for an input device. Mice are like a thousand. Um, and people are like, oh, it doesn't matter what the hertz is for a, for a pen because it's, it's always absolute. It's the exact value. And it's like, well, you know what? I feel like sometimes it might miss. Maybe it will. You know, 144 times a second isn't that many in the whole scheme of things. And Osu is one of those games where you can just feel, feel something's wrong. You don't know what it is. It's like, the, it's the only game where like a thousand hertz monitor would actually make a bloody difference. Crazy. It's a weird game. It's like, it's really like the, the, the absolute min-max of a video game you can get. Like a black fucking screen with white circles on it. Ugh, oh, are you playing AR11? Shit's coming in at 200, is it 200 or 250? I don't remember. It's either 200 or 250 milliseconds from the time the circle starts to finish. You have to see and tap it. And it's like every... whatever. Gaming tablet went. That's all I'm asking. I think we're not going to get one though because Wacom owns the licensing right 
to their special like pens and samsung has like licensed it or they own wacom i don't know which so that's why the s pen uses this tech but every other non wacom tablet has to have a battery in the end i don't know how apple got away with it or if they have to charge theirs actually you have to charge the apple pencil don't you you can overclock it i don't think you can overclock it i think people have tried uh, anyway sorry um i want to quickly finish this uh screen rendering system the position is the transform dot position and the size is this size well hang on why does it draw where it does then is it just because it's drawing the bottom left of the okay well oh, hang on uh, if i've got this right yeah i know you said the 0.5.5 .5 thing is the the or the transform zero zero right that is the bottom left isn't it right like every every instance here's origin point is this the origin defaults to the bottom left but like the transform the actual point the player exists here where my mouse is sorry this is the player where my mouse is pointing to right this this here this dot or is the player in the center hey rng how did i draw this Sprite.origin. I guess I just defined this. I think the play position actually isn't the center. They're using an offset of 0.5f, 0.5f2. I think they are. Yeah. Does that origin number there represent the width of the texture? Like halfway through the texture or something. Which makes sense. It does make sense. Uh, no, actually, hang on. What's up? Do you need to be maybe after? How about at the bottom? This is a shit feature of C++, not being able to randomly order your fucking boys. Oh, whoops, I need to close the game. I need to have like a fucking message that shows up if the game... Oh, here we go. Boggers. There's our hitboxes. So, let's make it so... Oh, that's so e That makes it so much comfier. The Woho thing, like trying to calculate the hitbox size was such a pain in the arse. The reason they made it... Is so they need to be in order so it's clear which order the constructors run in. Oh, yeah, because you can you can create variables in the constructor. Okay, fine. Run. Swift Swift enforces it too. It's um and they, they can do inline lets. Um whereas Kotlin doesn't. I don't quite know how it works. Maybe it pretends it's a builder or something. Uh you can you can move them around as you want uh okay actually also in um in swift you have to name the component you have to name the parameter by default like you have to write like sprite you have to do that unless you say the parameter with a little underline at the start whatever um let's uh, uh collision so the player i'm gonna do four the enemy i'm gonna leave as big so they're easy to hit and the bullet is gonna be fucking teeny tiny small and see you can use any order because it doesn't have constructors okay yeah look at this the bullet is teeny tiny small the player also is teeny tiny small but the enemy is easy to hit oh dude i just tried to hold shift to like slow my movement I'm already getting some, like, muscle memory for, like, woho. At some point, do you think I'll have sprites that aren't just the player? I don't know. I'm kind of enjoying just using the players to shoot other players. I find it kind of funny. Oh, so I didn't realise the value in having a rectangular sprite, but it lets me really see when you're going right into the corners of the screen. It's kind of nice. Ooh. 
All right, let's do some super basic crap. We're going to go to the collision system for every entity with a collision and a transform. So we've got everything with a collision. Uh, now I need to do this again? No, do I? Can I have this dot each stored here? Can I do... I don't know if this works. So, dude, get out of here. For everything in all collidables, and then for everything else in all collidables. Is this allowed? Because then I don't have to search the registry twice. You might be able to store the view without dot each and call each multiple times. You don't know if that's allowed. Returns an iterable object to visit a view. The object returns a tuple. I don't know, it doesn't say anything. I guess I could get rid of the four each and then do uh, do it twice, I mean. Makes like that, okay. Check what view docs says too. These aren't docs. You might say something may only be iterated once. Let's just experiment. Let's see what it does. Uh, um, my and I'm just going to do my and yours. I know it's a little stupid, but like, I think it. I don't know, I, I, I kind of like this. I feel like it implies a lot. It'd be unfortunate if it works by accident and then stops working in the future. Oh, as in if the word may. Hmm. How, sorry, I'm um, just ig ignoring the that small minor detail. Um, I want to do a masking operation, right? So I want to do... Uh, Well, my collision dot layer. I don't remember what the syntax is, but um, your collision dot layer. Let's check. How do I do an and? Is it just and? What what's what do I want to do here? I want to. You want two bit sets in each collider, its own layers and the layers it collides with. I guess so. That could mean that I could decide on the fly if an enemy bullet does collide with other enemy bullets, for example. It wouldn't have to be... Well, it wouldn't have to be set for that particular uh, object type. It could just be done on the fly. That's, 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 that's not too bad, I think. Although, could I set like a default somewhere? Where, like, um, player stuff always collides with... I guess the player would never collide with the bullet. The bullet would collide with the player. Although... That is technically a way I could do... Uh, that's a way I could do grazing. I could... Uh, actually, never mind. No, I can just do grazing in the regular collision detection. I can just say if it's the radius times two or something. Um, ignore that. Whatever. You'll want two bit sets in each collider. Let's let's get on with that. Um, layer and layers collide against my layer. What like what I've never written my and your. I don't know why I've just started, but like I feel like I've seen it somewhere. Nice neck or layer. Um Collide against Oh it's 
it's kind of self-explanatory. I don't know if there's a better way to name that. Anyway, um... Oh, thank you. I'm thinking as well, I could technically have like a, like a function pointer in here where I could say like, if collision against and then a layer, and then I could execute that function in the collision system. So for example, for the player, or for the, the enemy bullet, I could, ha I could pass in a function that says, kill me. In the bullet physics engine, they call it group for my layers and mask for layers to combine with. Let's go with that. Industry standard. What did you say? Group and layers. They're short. Um, my layer, layers to collide against. I write it in a comment. That's fine. Makes it easy to remember. Does that seem stupid? I don't think it does. Or does it? My my like idea here, where I'd have like some function that's like uh, void on col uh, collide with, and then I have some like layer. I don't know how I write this in C plus plus at least. Do something. But like I have this as like a pointer. Like I don't really like function pointer. It's not interesting standard, you think Unity and Go dot use different names. Well bullet bullet is very standard, right? It's an industry standard. I'm trying to think like where where would I want to define the collision code? Obviously, collision, collision system could be the collision detection system, but not the collision deal with system. You'd argue not standard as physics or havoc. Maybe. It's more, it's more than physics, surely. Borderlands 2 uses it. What else uses bloody physics? I remember trying to run that on a laptop because they were like, you could make all the fabric flow. I was like, yeah, it's crazy. Collision detection system. And then all, all the collision detection system would do. Unity uses it. Oh, never mind. The collision detection system would just would just detect that there's a collision and tell the entity to execute something. And then maybe where I define the player spawn. When I spawn the player, maybe there I define that it needs to explode when it touches a bullet or something. Or vice versa, that the bullet needs to explode when it touches the player. Oh, what's the best way? And it, should the bullet collide with the player or should the player collide with the bullet? You just write what happens in the system itself. I'm trying to think how much it matters because I'm, I'm imagining like a fair amount of but this there might not be that many collision commands right there might not be that many there might I mean if even if there's a lot you know like a thousand lines isn't that many but like just have different functions for everything I just need to start writing I think I, I might be think I might be thinking of a non-issue this might not actually be that bad um Group and layers, so we need to go to the template factory. Uh, group is pl collision group. Yeah, no, collision group. When I'm like thinking about the name, it, it does make sense. Uh, collision group, and I need to do um, layers. The player right now isn't going to collide with dipshit. The player is not going to do anything, I've decided. Yeah. I think the way I want to think about it is that the, the thing that should handle the collision 
should be the thing that initiates. So if the bullet hits the player, not the player is getting hit by a bullet. So that, that's how I'm just going to think about it, just to try and group stuff together as sensibly as possible. So I'm going to put the bullet hitting the player code and the bullet hitting the enemy code as the origin of the bullet component, like badomf. Collision behavior with options like... Well, it would have to be collision behavior with group or with layer. Or I could have a collision behavior for each, like a list of collision behavior for each member of the enum. Uh, which, I mean, might be a little stupid. Or I could have it like a like a set, but you said sets are really expensive. Although maybe I could share that set with every type of bullet. Make a projectile component that holds the damage to apply on collision. Yeah. Could I make a... Uh... Oh god, deja vu. Um... Yeah, I guess I could split up the collision system to, for each member of the enum, the layer, I could have a, uh, a different system. And then I could reorder the systems, technically. But that's not an issue for now. I just, we should get something written down. We were just, we were just thinking, we're not doing. Hang on. Um, let's just let's just let's just do this for a second. Uh, collides with collision group collision group collision group spawn bullet. So the bullet is going to dot collide against. Oh, hang on. Can I do? How how would this work? Can I not merge these boys? Uh, well, this actually is just going to be enemy for now. But like, if I wanted to have multiple things, what's the syntax for that? To merge, use bitwise or. Okay. Braces around sk. Oh, okay, fine. God, this is bringing this is bringing back all the joy I remember doing like the keyboard input thing, where it's it's like having an array, but it's not. It's, it's a one integer. Isn't that insane? It's so cool. Anyway, that's not what we're doing here. Um, I'm just gonna write this as like a little note for now. Uh, if you oh, whoops, uh, if you want multiple. Use bitwise or like so. Nice. So I guess I could pass the group in here in spawn bullet, actually. That might work. And then this way. I mean, technically, I should just pass the collision in. I think. Collision, collision. And then whatever's spawning in the bullet can handle that. Who is spawning in a bullet? There should be handle weapon. Yeah, it's just you for now. Uh, bah, 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 bah. It's like unordered set of input a million times faster. It's really cool, isn't it? Hmm. 
going to include no components is there group equals uh collision uh player bullet and it collides against enemy but i think the weapon should hold that should it should it no handle weapon hang on hang on hang on hang on hang on hang on handle weapon this is just any entity should I check to see if the entity has a player component or an enemy component? How how bad is that? Group and mask. You've got groups and layers that you don't know about. Oh, sorry. I'll rename it. So like this Tell me how stupid this is. The answer is very. But right like Why not add the player component to the view? Well, because I want this to be working for enemy as well. I mean, I guess technically I could just duplicate this entire section for... Like, copy and like this. Like this? You see what I'm getting at? Like this, this also works. Is this faster? It's definitely worse to look at. This is like the opposite of um. In, I'm gonna say in modern programming languages, you usually you usually give up a little bit of performance to make something legible for the and like easy to maintain for the developer, right? This is an example where we're probably being a bit stupid for no reason. This is horrible. He says while writing it. Oh. You don't know what you're trying to do yet. Well... I was thinking if it's a player weapon, you pass in the collision for the player's weapon. Why are they different, different weapon logic? Because I want to pass in a different collider, the different groups and the different layers. Because to spawn the bullet, we need to give it a collider that says the size of the bullet, what it hits, and what it doesn't hit. So we need to at some point decide if the bullet is a player bullet or an enemy bullet. This is like the source of the bullet here. Right? And there's no ifs. There's no ifs going on here. We're just using the registry. This could be a member of the bullets truck that you keep in the list of bullets to fire. I thought you... Uh, maybe I misunderstood, but you made it seem like I want to avoid using ifs. I just want to have like a linear path for everything to run through. I don't want to... I mean, it's not really an issue, is it? It's one... Hmm. Restore the actual collision mask slash group. 
yeah, 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 but that's here. That's where I'm making it. This, this is here. That's this. Oh, do you mean the weapon? Bullets to fire? Like that, I, add bullet. Here? I guess we could do it here, actually. Yeah, no, yeah, that makes more sense. Okay, let's try this. Get rid of this bullshit. I was just trying something, you know, I just wanted to see what it would look like. It was clearly not the right idea, but I did say it was going to be stupid. Still kind of hate this duplication, but whatever. I feel like there must be better ways to do this. Um, honestly, bullets to fire can have their own collision. Whatever. Maybe it just needs to build first. Keep, I'm over optimizing in my head and it makes me it like it makes me never want to do anything because <laughs> I keep thinking about like these really minor things that just don't matter like storing a fucking integer like 50 times or you know like all these like pointless optimizations and then I just never end up writing anything because I'm like frozen I'm like oh shit this is going to be a bad idea Oh, sorry. Alright, so if it's an enemy, you'll want to have a... Yeah, you can have a radius of two, you can be a enemy bullet, and you hit layers. I will rename layers to mask. And then I'll go to template factory layers. I haven't used it yet. Player collides with nothing. Bullet collides with whatever it decides. Test enemy collides with nothing. Perfect. Okay. Spawn bullet. You come through here. The bullet has a collision. For every bullet and bullets to fire, this is added in here. Action responder system adding the bullet here. Collision is... I'm going to give the player slightly bigger bullets for fun. Uh, Mars. Just store everything as a string. <laughs> Yo, JavaScript. Okay, I've got a crazy idea. Lair is not a member. I knew it. Hang on, you wrote this earlier. There's a difference between and and bitwise in it. Logical and. This is what Donut's written. So if my collision mask and your collision mask, bitwise and. Oh, fuck, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so. Wait, well, hang on. No, that's. Wait, hang on. Why do you, why are you checking A? This is only if I say they collide against each other. I'm I'm just sort of doing it like a like a throw, right? Not like a throw, but only if you also want to throw it back. I guess this is if you want to have like a two-way collision. But like, can I not just do If my collision dot mask is your collision dot layer, then there's a collision. Right? I'll just like format print collision. 
What's up? Oh. Uh, my dot group. What I was going to say is I'd go to the screen rendering system here. And because the collision has a group, can I change like the tint? Tint color. Where does tint color need to be, dude? How do I know? Like, I just need to go into the fucking method and scroll. Or is it just wherever it is in the mouse over? If I do like dot, does it say it at the bottom? Does it mean that this is always at the bottom? Origins at the top in this list, maybe not. I was thinking this, look. Um, uh, what is tint color? Are you... Color. So color, tint, color equals color dot. Uh, what's a default yellow? I don't know. And I can do uh, switch. Uh, no, wait. If <coughs> collision dot layer. I'm just going to do a logical. Uh, oh, not layer, sorry. A uh, group. I, hope, I mean, this probably works. If not, I could do uh, collision. You see what I'm getting at? I guess I could store all this stuff somewhere else. Translate layers to group and collision layers to mask. The whole point of having two ints is so it can be two way, it's a lot more flexible. Why, why do I want it to be two way though? Doesn't that mean I have to say for any collision, both sides have to agree on it? So I'm doubling up the number, like, wh where? I guess I could do that if I wanted to give something iframes. Maybe I could remove, like for example, I could remove enemy bullets from the player's mask temporarily. And the bullets might be colliding with the player, but the player isn't colliding back. Does that not mean I'm doing every collision twice though? Because I'm now looping through every list every list. They're going to collide with each other twice. Right? Because the, the first thing, like A is going to be my and your, and then they're going to flip and B is going to be my and your. Right? Or am I missing something? Um... Green. If it's a enemy bullet, we make it a uh, purple. And if it's a player bullet, we make it. Double collisions are going to be an issue you have to deal with either way. Are you. Uh, hmm. Are they? Because I guess two different bullets can collide with the player. Yeah. But doesn't that double the amount of collisions I'm, I'm doing? Right. It seems like I'm, I'm just increasing the work for myself and the computer for the benefit of flexibility. I don't want to increase my work. Anyway, I thought this was like a cute idea. For like the debug thing. What do I need to do? What's up? Oh. You're probably misunderstanding something. 
Thank you. Probably. Adding more conditions to the expression doesn't make... No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the code I'm executing in here, like, wait 100, this would then get ran twice because this loop would inevitably... These, these entities would flip around, so this would get ran twice. So you'd end up wait 200 for no reason, right? Like, just, I'm not saying that I'm wait 100 is what I'm running, but like, you know, this could be an expensive operation. Why would I want it to execute twice on purpose? It would run twice if both colliders want to collide with each other. Yes, that's what I s said. Right? That's that's the problem I said. Yeah, that's... What? I think we're on a different thread here. You don't want your closing code to be dependent on iteration order. Why is this dependent on iteration order? What are you on about? Uh, what have I done here? I've got this... If I am meant to collide with your group... Does this need to be amp? Hey, the drawing thing works. That's cool. I think I can get rid of this text. I think you can find it. I think it's in the program somewhere. It's probably in here. Yeah, okay, fine. Well, I mean, this... Shouldn't this just be spamming this, actually? For every entity... Oh, I just need to check the distances. Um, so this is if they even should collide. Um... Hang on, what's the contains, what's the circle? Um, is it just a circle? Circle my hitbox equals something. Circle your hitbox. So the center, I'm assuming, is a position on the screen. It's starting to fall asleep. Um, this is my transform dot position and uh, my collision dot radius. This isn't right, is it?
Oh, hang on. Can I not check two circles inside each other? Looking for intersects. Oh, okay. Do I need to create that? Oh, is it just intersects? Is it intersects? My hitbox and your hitbox. Like this. That should work. Okay. <clears throat> if two objects need to perform a collision resolution, it should be detected as in an initial pass and resolved in a second pass. Otherwise, the result will depend on which of the two objects detected that there was a collision. I, st I still don't get why that's a bad thing. I'm sorry. It, it just... What's what's wrong with the... You're being extra sure that like you're checking twice that the collision really happened. Because... <laughs> uh... I, I don't... They're at the bottom of shapes. Dot... Wait, sorry. What's at the bottom of shapes? It's more flexible if they can decide to collide or not. But it means I have to write twice as much crap. Doesn't it? I have to remember. Like, if I want these two things to collide, I have to write in both of their collisions to collide against each other. And there's no way to guarantee that. Um, actually, I kind of want to quickly check to see this, actually. Now I've got this written down. You said this is definitely wrong, by the way. You said I originally I needed to do this, but this this just doesn't this isn't allowed. Fine, I'll I'll do your thing. Destroying an entity in a nested loop might be undefined behaviour. Why would that be? I'm just saying I'm going with what you suggested, but I don't get why still. It still seems like a ridiculous thing to do. Like, I admit defeat, but I don't really know why. Which is not a good way to learn. Uh, Alright. Uh, what's this? My phone's going off. Oh, it's nice photos from Chris. Oh, lovely. She's in uh, Paris with a friend. She's been sending me some nice pictures up on the Eiffel Tower and stuff. Okay, so I guess I need to go through here and work out. Bullet is oh, fucking hell. The test enemy. This is so ridiculous. The enemy needs to know that it gets hit by player bullets. The player needs to know that it gets hit by uh, enemy bullets. Still going off. I want a snack, but I don't think I have a lot of food. I know destroying in a symbol loop is fine, but nested will cause problems. Oh, it's because I'm doing nested each is here like this. I guess I could mark it for deletion. You know? That might make the most sense. 
just like um Deletable entities. Or have a health value that goes below zero in a system that destroys everything in a health below zero. I I think I'll do that. I, I'll do that. Um, set health to zero. Uh, then make a low HP cleanup thing. I think that's that's for the best. I like that. Um, I was, I was just going to make like a list here, populate it, clear it, populate it, run through it, but I, I think having a clean up would make more sense. What's wrong, my, my son? I think you're fine. Nope. Circle reference. Okay. Oops. No? Could not match. Circle T against donut circle T. There's a static assert message behind your head you can't read. Static assert failed. Dot only accepts floating point inputs. Well, I guess my circle has to be a float. And I have to cast this as a float. Maybe. I'm slowly starting to read this debug output. No, I didn't say well. It's saying I'm learning how to read it slowly. Dot only accepts floating point inputs. Yeah, I get that, dude. Yeah, I get that, dude. Circle float. Uh, circle. Do I need to make the position a float too? Mm, no. Not sure why your radius is a U and eight to begin with, but yeah, you can just static cast float. I can just make the radius a a float. It doesn't really matter. I just thought it's extra fucking confusing. But this is fine. My music stopped, dude. It's so quiet just with your own head. Get out of here. I don't know why the rendering on Visual Studio breaks so much, but it always seems to show stuff as a bunch of vertical lines at the bottom. It looks kind of weird. Don't like it. Dude, give me um, relaxing JRPG music. No, give me Toho Instrumental. Yes. Nine days ago. It's a C-style cast, which is more dangerous because it can do things like reinterpret and remove const. Oh, shit. That's dangerous. What is wrong? Take me to the error. Hang on, let's clear this fucking output run. Oh, it's open still. Okay. That needs a different warning. These are not colliding. Let's give the enemy its gun back. Uh, gun. Let's make the enemy fire a bit less often as well. You'll try making two views instead of reusing it. Yeah, it could be the issue. Pretty sure the collision system is implemented, but let's just double check. I feel like we did that quite early on. Oh, maybe not. Nope, good thing I checked. Collision should happen 
after all the movement? Or before? You've shot. You've moved, you've moved. There's physics, there's culling, there's restricted movement, there's an enemy system. Yo, it's yelling collision now. Look at that. Dude. We're the world's greatest. You can see it actually does seem to line up with the circle. I can actually disable the sprite drawing thing temporarily because I think it might be overly confusing things. Uh... Let's do this. Holy shit. Isn't this sick chat? Let's make the enemy bullet really slow. Uh, weapon system. No. Uh, enemy system? Oh, hang on, where am I setting that shit in? Here? Ah. Oh, I'm just making it 250. Okay, I should probably have that in the weapon, right? Weapon. Bullet. Uh, how about we have uh, fucking speed? There you go. Now you're forced to chuck it in. Isn't that just start velocity? No. Well... No. Start velocity is multiplied by this number. I want the num- Yeah, I've made space invaders too. Start velocity is multiplied by this number. I guess speed multiplier, you could call it. Would I store it in the weapon? It seems easiest right now to store it in the weapon. And then when you give the player or the enemy their weapon, decide on the projectile shot speed. That's why it's called an Isaac. I'm gonna do that. Since it's normalized before being multiplied, that's the equivalent to setting its length to the speed. Y yes. But I'm wondering the best ways to play this. The best place to place this. Either the bullet has its own individual uh, shot speed, or the weapon holds it. I kind of like the idea of the bullets have their own having their own shot speed. Or maybe not. Maybe the weapon has its own shot speed, and if the bullets, if I want the bullets to fire at different rates, I can I can do that another time. Right? The results should be stored in start velocity. Otherwise, you're storing the same information twice. Yeah, don't know. The thing is, this is calculated before... Right? Yeah, we, we need... This is handled weapon. We need to know that before... Before the bullet is created then handle weapon should get the start velocity as a parameter. From here. Um, and then what? I'm just moving it back a bit more. By saying basic firing weapon or enemy has the, has the fire rate? Where does it come from? The enemy have his own fire rate? Maybe? Shot speed? Weapon presume- That's what I was saying! 
what I was saying all along. I don't understand. This is already being passed in. Yeah. Dude. Fuck's sake. Uh, I'm going to put shot speed. Because this is what it's called in Isaac. So I know I know what this means. As long as it's not stored in each bullet. Okay. Okay. Well, I think the bullets can have a variable velocity. Maybe I can have a gun that shoots like slow, medium, slow, medium, slow, medium, slow, medium. And then the bullet would, I mean, the start velocity would vary between them. It wouldn't be a single source of truth. Whatever. Whatever. Who cares? Whatever. Shot speed is passed in here. Shot speed is passed in here. Add bullet requires me to uh, here. Uh, 250 is going to be uh, weapon.shot speed. Uh, this is back in my day to be a ban. One's too soft. I'm soft boy. That's a thing. I'm not being weird. That's a thing. I think. I think it's soft boys a thing. Alright. Uh, and now in Template Factory where I'm creating a weapon, I need to pass in a shot speed. So the enemy's shot speed is... Um, where the fuck am I looking? This thing. Dot shot speed equals two... F Let's make it like 100. Dot Let's just make it slow for now. I'm also going to make this a uh, basic firing weapon. Maybe I should make bullet firing the weapons that just go straight down. I might do that. Because that's quite a common thing in bullet hells, right? Just bullets that go straight down. There you go. I'm not very masculine at all, am I? But... Um, <clears throat> Got shot speed, and then the player. Where are you? Player fucking weapon. Your shot speed can be a nice, sneezy two fifty. Action responder system, where you are adding your bullet. I think you're doing it, aren't you? Yeah. Oops. Dot. Oh, hang on. I need to do a build, I think. Hang on. Uh, add bullet requires you to have a bullet. The bullet needs to have a shot speed. Spawn bullet. Spawn bullet is different to add bullet. I'm going to rename this to load bullet or something. No, that implies that you're loading it from like a file. Like, you're putting stuff in a clip. Uh, fucking... Weapon system? Hand handle weapon. Maybe it just works. Maybe, I, maybe I'm overthinking this. Maybe this already is fine. I mean, it seems to be pretty dead perfect, right? So this is a collision. This is a funny uh, effect of the system. Because the player's moving. Oh yeah, we actually had this conversation in Woho, didn't we? We were like, some bullets can have the player's velocity added on. So if you're moving up, the bullets don't do this. Hang on, does this have controller support? Holy shit. Oh my god, I've never tried this. Dude, 
This works with a controller, don't it? That's so cool. You see this shit? Why have, why have I not tried that? Oh no, it's drifting. Why is it drifting? I hope it's not because it's a new fucking controller. I'd be so pissed if it's built in drift. Something's definitely a little off here. Oh, and off he fucking goes. The drifter. Maybe I need to turn it off and then on again. So I sent a bigger dead zone. Yeah, I think that's the issue. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a dead zone thing. Dude, that's so cool. It suddenly feels like a video game because you can use it with a controller. Dude, that's so cool. How, how do I search? How do I open a file quickly? I just need to control F. Do I use a dead zone anyway? Hang on. Input manager. Where, 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 where? Input manager. Options. Do I have to put them in here? Like dot. You do it in here, right? Oh, wait, options would be like this. That can't be right. Because this is now constructing like options, right? Hang on, how do I do this? Input manager. What are options called? They're called input manager options. Dot. Uh, left stick dead zone equals 100? What is that? Does that not let you move? Maybe? Okay, it doesn't let you move. How about one? One also doesn't work. How about 0 0.01? Okay, it's that. Uh, let's set it to like, I don't know, 80%. Okay, that... Is that fixed it? I guess I don't have anything in place to like, snap you to a vertical thing. Like, some games will do that, right? If they see that you're mostly moving vertical, they'll sort of snap you to that direction. Hang on, you're telling me with movement like this, it's really better to play Woho, uh, Toho with a a mouse and keyboard than a controller. You can do so many fine inputs like this. This is sick. It's like I've played a video game. Isn't that cool? Holy shit. You press a trigger to fire. Dude, this is an analog trigger too, so I could have it so like you explode if you hold it halfway down or something. Can I color the output? Can I have like a red collision text? I'm just trying to like test the very edges of stuff. It does seem to, like the the hitboxes do seem to match how they look, which I, I mentioned before was like it was a big annoyance of me with like the original Woho, was how hitboxes just didn't look the way they should. And I've decided to make the play, the enemy big just to make it the game feel a bit easier, and make the player bullets a bit bigger than the enemy bullets to make it again feel a bit easier. Like you can really like hit the edge of the enemy to count as a hit. Dude, I, sorry, I can play with this all night. It's past midnight. Isn't this cool? Is anyone else everyone watching? Can you see this shit? It, it's like a video game. Like, what did we have like two streams ago? We had like a sprite. We've got this now. That's so cool. <sighs> Can't get over it, dude. All right. Let's give the enemy the difficult firing system. 
uh, template factory, spawn bullet, and test enemy. Give you the uh, predicted. I guess this is what I get for working on the game engine before I work on like sprites and shit, huh? You get to work in all these cool systems before you put much else in place. Because I was also thinking like, how good would a game with an N64 styled background really look with actual sprites? Was, maybe it's better just to have actual polygons for everything, but like really low res, I don't know. Oh, sorry, I can't go over this. You know the feeling, you just spent a lot of time just jumping around your FPS level. I, I've listened, lately I've been listening to a lot of like the Game Maker Toolkit videos. And there was one where I think it was like the Celeste developer was like, the, the, the core of a good game is one that if you put someone in like an empty room, they can just run around and enjoy it. And like it makes sense with Celeste, like the player movement feels so good. But like this, this reminds me of like when I used to make like the Game Maker games as a kid. You know, I just I could just sit here and do this forever. I, I don't know I don't know what it is, but like knowing that we've sat here together, and we've we've we've, we've pulled out something cool. It's sick. It's, I got a controller, dude. It works with a controller. It, it just isn't that cool. I I don't know. I can't I can't go over it. Oh, dude, there's something going off here with this. Uh, this controller's dead zone. I need to look into that. Maybe I'll do some debugging. Or maybe I've got another controller plugged in. It's moving to the left. I don't know. I'll see what I can do. Because this is brand new. I hope it's not defective. It feels good. I'd like to keep it. Uh, anyway, sorry. I can't I can't do this all day. I shouldn't. I should stop. Oh. Thank the STL devs for making the STL game controller API. Thank you, STL devs, for that. Next stream, who knows what we're going to do, but progress, progress is good. Progress is fucking great, let's be honest. This is sick. It's so sick. It's really cool. Sorry, I'm going to stop. Um, it's time to end the stream. Thanks for watching. I'll be back on Sunday. Look, I can even put it on the VTuber set. Look, ba -bom, it's me, Tiny Woolen. Did you enjoy the stream today, everyone? I'm going to stop now. How's coding, brother? Oh shit, if you're here, Bad Scout, I'll, I'll quickly, I'll show you quickly. You just got back. Look, let me show you. Check this shit out. Look at this shit. Look, look at this shit, Bad Scout. Look at this. I'm gonna make it full screen on my own screen. Look at this shit. This is sick, right? The, like, debug drawing was such a smart idea. This makes it look so much more impressive than just the waifu chan smashing herself immediately i feel so much more confident than when we were making woho one like i know these things work and they make sense and i know the systems i'm using make sense and it's not too stupid God, so cool the predicted firing thing is like really cool Sorry, I gotta stop. Um, <laughs> time to stop. Thanks for watching the stream today. I hope you all had fun. I might stream tomorrow, probably not. I'll be back on Sunday with something new or this. We'll have to see. Uh, for now, good night, everyone. Have a good evening. I'll see you lot next time. Bye bye. Good night.